What's up guys? We're back at it today. As promised, we're looking at the UD Goblin. Gotta say, I am so impressed with this guy. I'm gonna go buy another one. This is the first RTA I've ever bought that I can honestly say I would not sell. <laughs> I wouldn't give this one away, man. You couldn't buy it off me. I Yeah, right now this is my all-day vape and with good reason. So let's get into it. What's this guy all about? He is an RTA from UD Technology. Huge airflow for one. You got giant open three mil slots on both sides. Adjustable airflow on the bottom. You can adjust that ring to close it off if you so choose. But let's get into it. What does it all come with? So. What you see in front of you is all assembled. I've been using this thing for probably a week now. I wanted to make sure I gave this a fair shake for you guys. So this is the box it comes in. Everything it comes with is on the table, um, but I'll go through that in just a second. It comes with a second piece of glass and a second chimney, which will allow you to actually make it smaller. It comes in a smaller form factor in the box. Uh, I have it with the extended glass tank section and chimney piece. Um, it holds more fluid. I think it holds up to four mils this way but you can make it smaller if you want. So it comes in a box just like so. Folds open, you got the atomizer right in there. A little bit of stuff to explain it. Flip it over to the back, and there's another little compartment where your spare glass and all this stuff will be. So you do actually get some eco wool, some thick canthal. Let's dump it out and see exactly what this stuff is. So you do get one spare screw, which is, Okay, that's good, but I really wish they would have gave me a spare screw for the bottom. So I'm just gonna jump all the stuff out and we'll bring the camera down and give you a nice close-up shot of everything. Okay, and everything there is what it comes with. Uh, you do get a, not a blue, but a black screwdriver. One spare screw. Uh, this is for the build deck. I really wish, the only thing I would have wished for in the parts bag was a spare screw for the bottom of the build deck, or for the bottom of the, that's a fill screw basically. You only get one and it's a unique screw, so don't lose this guy. So that's a quick once around. I'm gonna open it up now, I'll break it all down and we'll show you all the individual pieces. I have a build going on here right now, uh, which I will guide you through. I have went, okay, I built this, I picked up the UD uh, with some wire. Uh, this is triple twisted flat wire from UD, so I keep saying UD, but I don't know why, UD technology is how you pronounce it. Um, and this is really crazy wire, it's four pieces of wire, three pieces of flat wire twisted around a core wire. And it is amazing for flavors, I just can't, wow. So I picked it up from UD as well, and uh, came on a five meter roll. Okay, so there it is all broken down. Uh, this is everything you get right now. So I'm just going to move the spare parts. Actually, the cam all it comes with is pretty nice. I gotta say, it's probably at least a 24. Um, I'll actually, might even use it, not on this build. I have a build I did in here yesterday and I'm going to leave it in there. So I'm just gonna move all this stuff out of the way and bring everything in a bit closer. So that was really a couple O-rings and all that, but this is all the parts Oh, that it comes with. So I have a build I did yesterday uh, with some triple twisted flat wire and I just, I don't want to take it off. It's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So let's give you a once around there. You got the taller chimney. Oh, I got these kind of backwards here. Taller chimney, taller glass. You know, every piece of glass I've ever had for any RTAs, I've ended up breaking. And I just dropped this one when I was just trying to just clean it up a little bit. It's still dirty, but... Uh, and it survived. First time I've ever dropped a piece of glass and it survived. So let's go through it all. The build deck is absolutely amazing on this thing. The screws themselves are awesome. The way they've designed it with the Phillips, the screws, they're just, uh, I can't really explain, you gotta just see. They're deep. They have a deep trench in them, so they just, they're not prone to stripping. So you can see the juice channels are huge. And that's where they give you the eco wool. Uh, this literally you can just like you can. You don't want to pack the whole juice well full. I keep it just to the top, just like that, just so it's blocking the juice from flowing in freely. And you don't want to have it too tight, or the juice can't wick. 
So that'll be your only issue is packing your wicking material in too tightly. Uh, but other than that, it's great. It doesn't leak. Um, it's an awesome, awesome RTA. Best one I've used so far. So you do get this, uh, sorry guys, this threads in here on the top. So this comes off and allows you just for wicking, it makes it a lot easier um, to put it all together. Of course, I always got to fight with things when I'm on camera. It's always just butter when I do it by myself. So the only thing I did change, this bottom O-ring came black. I found it was a little bit loose uh, for the airflow control ring. Wherever the heck I put that now. Sorry, there it is there. So that's just personal preference. I found it was just a little bit loose. It just snaps on the bottom with the O-ring. Stays on there good now. Like it's not gonna fall off. Um, but I liked it a little bit tighter, and that's what I did. I just used an O-ring from an Orchid. It seemed to be perfect size. So I went ahead and used the triple twisted flat wire for this. I just thought I would show you. It came in a UD box. Uh, there's not really a part number. I can try and find it for you, but it's listed as 32 gauge, 3 ribbon, 5 meter twisted canthal, 4 wires, 0.2 millimeter. It was a 5 meter roll. It was a littler roll. I transferred it onto a bigger one, but I gotta say, this stuff is amazing for flavors and clouds. Well, wow. it just creates a lot more surface area for the wire uh, to touch your wicking material. And, you know, this build is about a 0.4 burned in it's six seven wraps so seven wraps each it's about as much as you can go inside the goblin in this you know before you're going to start hitting it you, know, you might be able to get one more wrap in there but you're kind of you know clogging it up pretty tight if you do that so seven wraps and it came out to a 0.4 burned in which is perfect for me so i'm going to go ahead and just re-wick this i'm going to be using cellu cotton again my personal medium of choice um, just a couple small pieces oh. sorry guys just a couple small pieces like this and that's what I like about you can see how perfectly straight all those fibers are so when you're going to be working into a coil like that you can just grab it off the roll and just kind of split it it makes it very easy uh, to get it consistently the same size so now I just kind of work it a little bit, kind of start twisting it down to my left. Make sure you wash your hands before you do this and try not to touch the cotton anywhere you don't need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring the camera down and get you a nice close-up shot of all this stuff. Okay, so I went ahead and twisted it. Um, you'll get to a really thin point, just kind of double it back on itself and twist it up or else you'll be fighting with it. And the really nice thing about the rayon is when you start to pull it through, when it starts to, to back up there, you're getting tight now, right? If you have too much, you can always pull it back a little bit uh, on this side and it will allow you to pull it through. What I like to do is get as much in as I can. So I'll start to spin it a little bit. You can see that just tightens it right up. If I put my thumb on this side of the coil. This protects me from pulling it all sideways. And that's perfect. That's where I like it. So cut that off. And you don't need much. I forgot to take that bottom ring off here. And uh, it's important you do that for this stage. Okay, so I just took that ring off there just to show you because when you're looking at the juice wells there, you don't want it coming down too far. So that's I'm going to use this as a guide. So I'm going to cut it off right at the top of my fingernail there. Right well there. So you can always trim it long and then come back to this part later. And that's kind of what I do. So I'll just kind of trim it short and then I'll come back and give it a little bit of a haircut when I got the other side in uh, all at one time. <laughs> okay, so I got a lot, way too much in there obviously right now. So this is where you want to get a trash can and trim this stuff over a trash can because all these little fibers just end up just ground into everything. So I'll show you about how much I take off and this is where you just need a nice sharp pair of scissors and I kind of push it all down so that you know like all the long fibers, you're not going to have any long ones left over at the end. And then trim it just, just about to the top of the juice well 
Okay, so just to show you how I do this, this is how I test fit. You take the, like you want the juiced wells to just have a little bit of wicking material into the tops of them. But you don't want it packed so much that the juice can't flow. This is where a lot of people get messed up and they get dry puffs and all that. So you can test fit as you go. And I kind of tend to just keep pushing everything down and make sure that it's not going to just have free access to just piss in all down the, the uh, onto the juice, <laughs> into the freaking build deck and down the airflow hole. Because if you have not enough here, it's going to leak all over the place. So that is about right. I'm going to leave it right where it is. And it's nice to just keep going, just test fit as you go and make sure that you're not taking too much. But this is about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and saturate everything here. I already burned in these coils earlier and made sure everything was, was good with that. Um, if you don't know how to build coils and stuff like that, um, I urge you to check out another video. This is more of a speed build. But one thing, the biggest trick I find with burning in the wires is to make sure you squish them. Uh, sometimes the power just cannot flow evenly through the wires until they've been kind of warmed up and squashed. And I love to use a set of flat pliers like this. It gets them nice and tight. And this triple twisted flat wire is not the easiest stuff to work with. I found uh, even using my jig I had a hell of a time wrapping it. I ended up using just a blue screwdriver and wrapping it around that. So that's basically it. So let's get this thing saturated and put her together. So I'm going to put the bottom of the juice well on. This is what uh, connects to the glass. Make sure you got your o-ring on the o-ring on the bottom here and o-ring on the top here. And we're going to saturate the cotton. Okay, so I just use a little bit of juice here. And uh, as you're doing it, kind of push the cotton down up against the uh, center post there. And you don't need to overdo it, but you do need to make sure that it's significantly wet. Because if you don't have your cotton wet here, it can't wick properly and it'll never start pulling juice in from your build deck. Also, if you're using a heavier uh, e-fluid, like a 70 percent VG. Typically what I run is about a 65 VG blend, but if you're getting too much higher than that, wicking can become a problem. Even with this, it's smart to ramp the power up. Don't start at 50 watts, start at 25. And uh, let everything to start pulling all that, you know, the capillary action and all that stuff to start happening. Uh, or else you could get a couple dry puffs as well. And that is no fun. So that's it. Saturated it up. Screw down the juice well here. And I'm taking the, I'm using a large chimney because I'm going to be using the big piece of glass as it allows me to hold more liquid. Glass goes in. I always like to make sure right now that you uh, don't have any fingerprints or anything on the inside of the glass that you're gonna see because typically like if you're using the same juice for like you can use the same build for a few days depending you know, as soon as I notice though the flavor start to diminish I immediately do a build on it okay There's got to be something. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. And then the top cap. So you just thread it down. You don't need to over tighten it. You might crack your glass if you do that. So you just make sure that everything's sitting properly on the O rings. You feel it start to tighten up. And that's it. Give it another little quarter turn. And that's all I would go. So now we need to fill it up. And this is so easy to do. Um, with a regular bottle, something like one of these, it's perfect. This is the perfect way to fill these things. Uh, if you have needle tip or like uh, these kind of glass bottles, it still does work, uh, but you might get a little bit of leaking. So the one thing I love is you can use a big screwdriver and the screw itself is magnetic 
a lot of those other stupid screws they use on the orchids and stuff, they're not magnetic. And it's just retarded. They're made out of aluminum. So it makes it a lot easier when you go to put it in, when you can just, you know, if your screws make, if the uh, screwdriver's magnetic, it makes it a lot easier. So don't forget to put the screw back in. I've done that now twice. And uh, yeah, not a good, not a good thing. Okay, so I just transferred a little bit of that stuff to one of these bottles. Just it does make it a lot easier. And that's it. You just pump her in there. Just keep holding pressure on it until you watch it start to fill up. And then you want to kind of tilt it. And the bottle actually, the, the tip fits right down that hole. So it will actually suction out. So if you overfill, when you let go, it will actually pull juice back out. So I'm going to kind of hold that way. I got all that juice that I put in there, which is a few mils. That's good enough for me. That's cool enough. Oh, now I put the screw back in. Do not forget this. I've done it. Flipped it back on my mod. I'm wondering, why is my juice burning up so fast? And I keep cleaning freaking juice off my mod. And oh, duh. Put the screw in. And they do not give you a spare one of these. But I guess they figure you can't really use it without it. But still... People lose stuff, man. So now, I like to just make sure everything's clean. I'll go and just rinse it off under the water. I don't like to have tobacco or the e-juice all over my hands and such. There she is. All built up, ready to vape. So I like to let it sit for a couple minutes and just make sure that everything's wicking properly before I fire it. That's just me. You can throw it on at a lower wattage and start vaping right away, and I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't have any issues. So typical UD fashion, they don't include a drip tip with this. I found a couple that work really nice. Uh, this one here was off of, actually that was a little boy RDA. What the heck is that thing? Beer. Came off this one, actually. And I find it's kind of like a plume veil in the way that it's designed, but it's a little bit maybe longer or shorter. I don't know. But it looks nice. It's a nice sleek finish. And also, I have a Vape Life one that looks pretty good as well. But that's for you to choose on your own. You might want to get something with a Delvert insulator as there isn't one inside the top cap. But I find with these RTAs, because you have all this liquid cooling, if you will, down here, the mods don't get nearly as hot, nearly as fast as they would uh, in the case of a dripper. So let's throw this up on the IPV and see what we got. And there she is, up on top of the IPV. I just uh, one thing I want to rec recommend you do um, if you're in a hurry and you want to vape right away, you can do primer puffs on this guy. And just block the two airflow holes and then just pull through with your mouth and uh, let go, and you'll see sometimes bubbles come in. So I just got it up at about 38 watts right now. I still don't have it at full potential. It burned in at a 0.41, just perfectly right where I want it. And this thing just throws the clouds and flavors like I can't explain, you know. Ugh. If you're into RTAs, you like your orchids, that sort of thing, it has big airflow, so be prepared for that. However, it is adjustable, which is nice. You can crank it close a bit, and it does make a big difference. But even on its closed settings, like lower down, um... You know, it's not like a K fund. Well, I guess it kind of is. Flavors are spot on. Clouds are huge. The device is awesome. For an authentic, this one cost me $34.99. I picked it up from Vape Northwest. I'll throw a link in the description if you're interested. You can check that out. Definitely worth it. Until Fast Tech or someone else comes out with some clones of these guys, this one's worth it. And this is all 304 grade, food grade stainless steel. Like, the glass is quality. You're buying a good device when you buy something like this. So thanks again for watching the video, guys. Stay tuned. Got lots more to come. Keep calm. Vape on.